for staying with us. We're on to our final opinion court of 2017. And thank you so much for watching us throughout the year. Tonight we have a trio of topics and my guests are going to help us uh, make sense of them all. To my left is Joy Mudivo. And Joy, how would we want, want to be known to the general public? Because today I'm an advocate of the high court. She is an advocate of the high court, as is James Mambaleo to my immediate right. And of course, our favorite, Edward Kisiangani, our resident political analyst. You're all welcome to the Thank program. You. So um, let's begin um, with uh, our top story tonight. The fact that the Supreme Court declared the mandatory death sentence for murder uh, convicts unconstitutional although the court did not abolish the death sentence which is what had been sought by the uh, petitioners it did give judges the discretion to hand life sentences to those found guilty depending on the mitigating circumstances and now all murder convicts will have to await the formulation of new guidelines to have their sentences reviewed so joy what does that mean exactly and how far back uh, would the impact of this decision go it's universal actually once such a decision has been made then it means rather than every person on death row having to go to court to have their sentences reviewed they simply rely on that to work for everybody and that's why there is the need to set up a special task force to come up with the regulations to change this but one thing that we need to to make uh, people understand is that when we have laws, the drafters of laws need to be conscious of the fact that laws are not just made for people, but laws don't have universal applications. That's why you have courts. Mm -hmm. And so when you draft laws with mandatory sentences or mandatory provisions in them, sometimes it takes away the discretion of the court when they're trying to um, um, make um, sentencing. And so that's why a decision like this is important, because what it has done is simply given back that discretion to the judges saying, look, you are the one who has had the case. You are the one who is passing sentence. Mm -hmm. Pass sentence according to what you think should happen. So if you think it is as bad as all the way to death, mm -hmm. you are free to go ahead and sentence death. But if you think it is less, so it gives them that discretion. Because what we had before, some crimes, it was mandatory. If I find you guilty, there is no other um, recourse, I must sentence you to death. Right. So that's the import. Uh, and James, what would go into the formulation of these guidelines? What sort of things do you think need to be considered? Um, I, th I think, you know, this discussion about the death sentences is, is several centuries old. From the 18th century, you saw uh, people like Cesare Lombroso trying to explain why we should send people to the gallows mm. for those offenses that were considered so egregious that, you know, society um, was so outraged by them that the only option they had was uh, to uh, take the, the, the life of uh, the offender. However, in the 21st century, you see the judicial system or the, um, the penal system trying to move away from such drastic measures into a more palatable scenario in which reformation of the offender uh, is more important to give this offender a chance at reformation and reintegration into society where it is possible. Now, the important question that you have asked is uh, how do we deal with this question? The Supreme Court has taken cognizance of two things. The first one being that the framers of the 2010 Constitution were aware of this split discussion on whether to continue holding or sustaining um, the death penalty in the stated books or to do away with it altogether. And there are pros and cons for both scenarios. So the, the Supreme Court being cognizant, uh, sorry, the, the, the framers of the Constitution being cognizant of that fact gave a discretion to the judges that, you know, you could uh, sentence to death or in some cases give life imprisonment. Now, there's some offenses in the, in the penal code which would still um, give a mandatory sentence of death for instance what we call prison treason and so what the supreme court has done is basically say that there is no scenario in uh, in an, in a proper reading of the constitution in which the the judge has only one option which is to sentence to death since the constitution allows for um, a life sentence and so what i see going into these regulations is uh, um, trying to establish in what cases uh, that uh, life imprisonment uh, would would suffice and in what cases um, the death sentence would apply because the 
uh, corpus of uh, precedents and laws from which this particular discussion has been borrowed um, has, for instance, in England, uh, takes cognizance of the fact that even all, if, even even offences that would lead to death <coughs> are not similar. They are not same, um, and each offender has to be treated differently. Even where a murder has been uh, committed, it is not all murders that are similar or identical, and several circumstances would mitigate uh, probably the sentence that is finally given. So uh, it, it requires some bit of work to marry all the pieces of legislation that we have and identify those cases in which um, the proper sentence would be life imprisonment mm -hmm. and in those cases where uh, the judges probably would be given a hand to meet out the, the death sentence then that will be done all right and, and just before i open it to you prof uh, for opinion finally joy how would this decision then affect how uh death row convicts or previously death row convicts are held. Does that, do their circumstances then in behind bars change? No, I do not think so. That has not changed substantially. In fact, right now we don't have very many people on death row because I think President Uhuru commuted about 2,000, over 2,000 uh, death row sentences to life imprisonment. Mm -hmm. So right now you've got very many people on life. So there may not be that many cases that are going to have revisions as it were mm -hmm. unless um you're looking at revisions maybe maybe not life maybe something else let's have a reduction and to add to what uh, Mambale was saying there might also be need for example in some of these cases to have victim impact statements see what do you think is this person re reintegrated there might be need to have many trials to see what sort of um mm -hmm. rehabilitation has gone through them but in terms of how they're held in prison the circumstances would still remain very much the same because these are considered high risk offenders and they're considered also a group of offenders who are likely to teach others how to become mm -hmm. hardcore criminals that's why they're usually kept even in a separate block and i don't see that that particular aspect of their lives is going to change what i do expect is that right now we're talking about death row mm -hmm. but we will see this particular principle being applied to challenge other pieces of legislation that do carry mandatory sentences mm -hmm. or um with some uh, for example the narcotics act mm -hmm. has got these sentences that talk about you can only sentence this much between fines of this much this much and they're quite extreme sometimes until it's almost unreasonable and also there's the sexual offenses act that carries some mandatory sentences mm -hmm. or some very stiff um lower sentences because they give you a range but the lower sentence is also quite stiff mm -hmm. it's in recognition of the fact that we have our cases had by judicial officers who are people who've been trained to hear these things mm -hmm. if it was a matter of punch a machine and say it was murder what is it it's a vending machine mm -hmm. you wouldn't need courts but the fact that you have courts we need to remove these fetters that make judicial officers forced mm -hmm. to only sentence in a certain way so i see this being rolled out to challenge other pieces of legislation that have tried to fetter the courts mm -hmm. into only making decisions in a certain way because legislators are to legislate mm -hmm. but the work of judicial officers is to interpret the laws and to apply them to those people who appear before them okay um prof you know uh part of what the petitioners wanted was you know the death sentence in itself to be declared unconstitutional but uh, is it your opinion that we have the right as a people to say that some people have done such wrong that they do not deserve to live i think i think and if you read this document in the constitution under article 26 of the constitution it says everybody has a right to life and uh, it doesn't say that any we can do how far we can deal with those who take away life but it provides for the fact that everybody has a right to life so to that extent of the constitution therefore nobody has a right to take away anybody's life including the state so when you see the court's ruling i'm very disappointed with the ruling myself because it doesn't just begin to uh, give direction because this is the supreme court uh, uh, the direction about what we should do in the constitution mm. the constitutional arrangement is what 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 the supreme court should have done specifically to give proper guidance was to say that there is no provision in the constitution that even imagines death sentence and in that on that basis therefore the ruling should be that uh, all all other uh, uh, you know rulings that will come sub uh, after this uh, after this ruling by the Supreme Court must take cognizance of the fact that there is no provision and since there is no provision the rulings the maximum they can go is to give life sentence so that's what what should have happened but to say
now they can use their discretion at, uh, uh, and, and sometimes choose life sentence, sometimes say, give death sentence, is still to leave a lacuna of interpretation in, in terms of the Constitution. So we haven't come out of that, and uh, she pointed out the issue of people going back to the courts to, 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 mm. to litigate over this matter. So in our, my opinion, uh, we have not sorted out the problem. Nobody can take away somebody's life unless unless the constitution provides and it doesn't provide. But the bigger crisis, Anne, is this, that when you see the court uh, operating with this kind of disparation, giving some discretion, it just demonstrates how, how much we have uh, deteriorated in terms of uh, implementing this constitution. The penal court, which, uh, which is the basis, actually the penal court, which is another name for the criminal co court, the, 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 prim uh, the, the, the penal court, and which is the other name for the uh, for, for for the criminal code, which means the laws that we, that govern criminal activities like like robbery with violence and so on, has not been revised drastically to deal with the uh, the requirements of this constitution. So what is critical now in terms of legislation and parliament is for parliament to start reviewing this these laws. And using the Kenya Review Commission for recommendation, they mm. can review the laws and make sure that these laws abide, the, mm. the penal code uh, abides with the Constitution. The, not, law uh, the Law Reform Commission, not the Constitution to obey by the, the penal code. Mm. And that has not been done. There are so many legislations, not just within the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. but even in other areas which are actually at the constitution and this one is one of them so the challenge we have now is the next level is not to deal with in fact what the requirement that the, the supreme court has, uh, court has done mm. but to get back to parliament and uh, review the entire p uh, p uh, criminal justice system and say which laws are applying and which ones are unconstitutional and you save f uh, future litigation for by people they are not likely to to end up with problems because there is a, a definite law which is informed from a professional angle that all laws that are being applied in the courts from from the from our perspective are laws that are constitutional okay fair enough uh, we, we're running out of time and we've got a tree of topics but so uh, just a minute each if, if you would to comment uh, on the, the 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 following issue so uh, quickly as we wind up on this uh, James um, will this decision in any way take away from victims and their families the full weight of justice I don't think uh, I don't think so because um, <clears throat> you see the the the, the they're sort of setting the policy on the question as to really how far you can go mm. in punishment and as I said earlier uh, society is now moving a little further from that retribu retributive society that we used to have in the 1800s and in the 1900s mm. and moving towards a a, a more humanitarian uh, society in which even offenders are treated with um, a modicum of, of dignity. And uh, the, the those, of course, who argue that uh, taking life is uh, probably the highest level of indignity you can give to a, a human being. Um, that I eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth scenario mm -hmm. is no longer tenable in modern society. And so the whole question about victims is a different discussion altogether. Because what needs to happen is that every, every judicial process as uh, it considered the question of uh, punishment should, uh, within the limits that have been set, should seek to understand really uh, what the gravity of the offense is and in what best way it can balance the interest of the society on the one part which is to uh, make the victims and the complainant feel like justice has been done without necessarily um, uh, at the same time uh, going against the high um, the, the high ground on which we have set for the um, enforcement for uh, not for the enforcement but for the respect of the rights of the accused person as well so what I think is uh, important is this these guidelines are going to be useful in uh, determining that for instance where it is possible to give or to hand down a, a, a death sentence mm -hmm. that this is the circumstance under which this can be given at the same time uh -huh. uh, if it is a life sentence this is the circumstance under which it, this is given because once the law stipulates that you know it is a death sentence, then it has to be a death sentence.